Welcome to Entry Point Faith, where every week we discover fresh meaning in the world so you can find faith your way. And now, please welcome your host, Pastor Nancy Lafferty. One day, two monks were walking through the countryside. They were on their way to another village to help bring in the crops. As they walked, they spied an older woman sitting at the edge of a river. She was upset because there was no bridge and she could not get across on her own. The first monk kindly offered, we will carry you across if you like. Well, thank you, she said gratefully, accepting their help. So the two men joined hands, lifted her between them and carried her across the river. When they got to the other side, they set her down and she went on her way. After they had walked another mile or so, the second monk began to complain. Look at my clothes. They're filthy from carrying that woman across the river and my back still hurts from lifting her. I can feel it getting stiff. The first monk just smiled and nodded. A few more miles up the road, the second monk griped again. My back is hurting me so badly. It's all because we had to carry that silly woman across the river. I can't go any further because of the pain. The first monk looked down at his partner, now lying on the ground, moaning. Have you wondered why I'm not complaining? Asked the first monk. Your back hurts because you're still carrying the woman. But I set her down five miles ago. Every single person is holding on to something we should be letting go of. It might be clothes that no longer fit or furniture that is worn out. It might be a person, a relationship, an idea, or a dream. It might be pain or revenge or anger or resentment. Letting go is not easy. We all struggle with it. We are stuck in the past and we can't move on because we can't let go of this thing that we're holding on to. Isaiah 43, 18 tells us to forget the events of the past Ignore the things of long ago. There are a lot of reasons why we think we can't let go. The main reason is that instead of letting go, we hold on. According to Andrea Matthews, holding on is all about bargaining. Bargaining is a way of magical thinking in which we tell ourselves all manner of things that are not true in order to keep holding on. Let's say you don't like your job. Here's how we bargain that situation. I hate my job, but if I just hang on, one day I'm gonna get a promotion and then I'll be the manager and then I won't have to do all the things that I hate. Letting go works just the opposite. If we move toward letting go instead of bargaining, we might say, I hate my job. I think I'll start looking for another, or perhaps I'll go to a career counselor who can help me figure out what I really want to do. Letting go is all about reality. We don't have the power to change other people. We don't have the power to fix other people. We cannot influence them to change. If they change and later tell us it was because of something we did or said, it was their choice to be influenced, not our power. Now, even though in our logical minds we know that people aren't going to do what we want them to do, We keep trying, and usually we keep trying the exact same way. 
We nag them, or we yell at them, or we shake our heads and wish they would change. You know why we do the same things over and over? Not because we are crazy, but because we are like sheep. Just a few weeks ago, I talked about how, like sheep, we walk in the same path until a rut is formed. This message today is another reminder to get out of the rut, and if you were listening to that message, getting out of the rut involves a shift in how we think. How many of you have friends that you just wish would get over it and move on? (laughs) They are so frustrating, aren't they? But when someone suggests to us that we should just get over something and move on? Well, we don't really like that advice, do we? I know this isn't news to you, but it's hard to get over something, especially a broken dream. In fact, some psychologists will say you never get over events of your life that cause you pain, but you can at least get past it. Let me say that again. How do we get over it? We don't, but we learn to get past it. According to Dr. Judith Sills, it's things we do as well as things we think that hold us unwittingly in a painful place. In her article entitled, How to Let It Go, Dr. Sills tells us that moving forward requires positive action. She suggests that we take these five steps. The first is to anchor ourselves in the future. Without a positive view of tomorrow, we can't let go of the past. We need to develop a solid vision for our future. An investment in, a distraction through, or an excitement about something ahead will supply the energy and the will to push us beyond the past. We need to create a plan or at least some goals for our future. The second step is to discard. The space around us at home sends a message about how open we are to change and rebuilding. We might need to declutter and discard some things. Now, we shouldn't throw it all away in a huff, but sometimes sifting through the rubble helps us to see the items of true value. When we are suffering, we might find that we simply cannot discard some items. So don't. Put them in a box and stick them in a closet somewhere. Bring those items out later. As we discard and sort through things, we need to prepare to feel lots of different emotions. We might feel anxious, energized, sad, overwhelmed, regretful, or nostalgic. It doesn't matter how we feel as long as we keep discarding. The next step is to repair. Repair broken furniture torn clothing, and broken relationships, if possible. Make amends. It's good for us to reach out to express our remorse in person or on paper. The repair step may or may not restore the relationship. Many other factors will determine that outcome. But it is a way to put away that part of the past that has helped to keep us from moving forward. The next step is to forgive. The act of forgiveness frees us from the emotional intrusions of the past. When we have been deeply wronged, there are powerful rewards to staying angry. Forgiving the other person forces us to give up the right to remain angry. The last step is to learn to be present. Learning how to be fully present 
in the here and now is the single most powerful antidote to leaving the past behind. Our emotions get in the way of the focus that we need to have to fix ourselves in the here and now. The technique is called mindfulness, and we have mentioned it several times throughout several messages over the past several years. Mindfulness is the ability to shut out the emotions that are driving us and learn instead to breathe deeply and stay in tune with right now. As we stay in the present, we will get past the past much more easily. Letting go is a process, like so many things that can't happen with one try. We have to resolve to do it over and over. We have to let go today and then let go tomorrow and then the next day and the next. It's not an instant experience. I recently had a wonderful opportunity to practice mindfulness and go through the process of letting go. Last weekend, I traveled to Roanoke, Virginia to officiate the wedding of a dear friend. The wedding was held in a beautiful venue on top of a mountain. Now, in order to get to that venue, I had to take several steep, winding roads up the side of a mountain. Now, let me remind you that I grew up in Ohio. I spent many years in South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia, and then I moved to Indiana 20 years ago. None of the places I lived ever required me to drive on steep mountain roads. I was really doing okay until I reached the sign that indicated that the venue was one mile further up the road, up the very steep road that looked like the first hill of a roller coaster that was one lane and that was gravel. I said many things out loud to my car as I twisted and turned up that mountain and finally reached the top. As soon as I saw my friend, the bride, I hugged her and I said, someone else will need to drive my car down that mountain. She said, oh yeah, um, I guess I should have warned you about that. And she then vaguely promised that we would get somebody to do that later today. I tried to shrug it off, but as the day's events wore on, I realized I was consumed by the worry of getting my car back down the mountain. It was all I could think about and all I could talk about. Here I was in a most amazing location in the presence of someone I hadn't seen for several years with a chance to meet and talk with lots of new and interesting people and I was about to ruin it with obsessive worry. I had to let it go. I had to acknowledge that I couldn't control the mountain, but that when the time was right, I would be able to solve the problem. This was not the time to focus on the car and the road and the mountain. This was the time to be present to drink in the people and the place and the event and to enjoy it. So I took some deep breaths and I took a walk. I started walking around and looking at the setting. I walked and I breathed and I talked out loud to myself about my breathing and my walking. I practiced mindfulness techniques of focusing on what was physically around me instead of on my emotions. And as I did that, I became aware of the true beauty in the setting, as well as the beauty in the voices all around me. Soon, I was involved in a delightful conversation with someone I had just met, and the fears and worries about the car and the mountain road began to recede to the back of my mind and then finally out of my mind altogether. My friends, 
This life is too precious for us to be consumed with worry and to stay stuck in the past. I know the temptation is strong to hold on to things and people, but we are missing out on so much when we are unable to let go. So for the love of God, will you please let it go? Amen. Thanks for joining us this week on Entry Point Faith. The Entry Point Faith community meets every other Sunday at Connor Prairie in Fishers, Indiana. For more information or to join in person, visit entrypointonline.org. Entry Point Faith is a part of the Switchpoint Media Network. Find a variety of podcasts by visiting switchpoint.media.